This social security measure gives at least some protection to 30 millions of our citizens. We can never ensure 100% of the population against 100% of the hazards and vicissitudes of life, but we have tried to frame a law which will give some measure of protection to the average citizen and to his family against the loss of a job and against poverty-stricken old age. Franklin Roosevelt succeeded in getting the first social insurance law enacted in 1935. Nearly 50 years later, Bob Ball rescued the program when its most important and largest program, Social Security, was running into severe trouble. After uh, elections in November of, that, of 1982, where the Reagan administration really lost seats uh, in the Congress, the White House recognizes they needed to come up with a solution because if they had not, benefits could not have been paid in full in July of the following year. In January of 83, Senator Moynihan and I were on the commission and we just happened to meet on the Senate floor and said to each other, we can't let this commission fail. There are 30 million people relying on, on Social Security. The result is we finally got a bill passed and one of the reasons was the work of of uh, two Bobs, a guy named Bob Myers, who was a Republican, and of course the real leader, Bob Ball, who was a Democrat. Bob spent seven decades of his life devoted to Social Security. After the 1983 Social Security amendments, uh, Bob Ball and I started talking about the need for developing more of a professional community to support the uh, ideas around social insurance. It was a very a challenging time for the social safety net and for the programs we cared so deeply about, Social Security specifically. And I think in the course of that came to realize the importance of an infrastructure that essentially supported the intellectual capital needed uh, to keep those programs going. Bob Ball realized that we needed to have a place where people could come together and study these programs, do first class research, on the programs, help them evolve in the future, and build future leaders that would understand the programs going forward. It was exhilarating to know we were at the start of something that if we succeeded would have a real impact on public understanding of why we have programs like this in the United States. The most important purpose of the organization was to help to create a group of knowledgeable, informed, and generally sympathetic uh, people in the generations that followed him. The Academy itself reached another level. We found the Pam Larson who really gave us the kind of day-to-day -day leadership that it needed. NASI has grown from those 16 intrepid organizing committee members to almost 900 members now and 300 young leaders across the U.S. We're pleased to be a growing body of experts taking the Social Security story to so many stakeholders. The people who contribute while working so they might benefit when they can no longer work. NASI is a key contributor towards the research element and towards the thinking and bringing people together to develop and evolve ideas for the furtherance of social insurance and the maintenance of it. NASI is one of the unique places where everybody's welcome. Everybody can come. We have R's and D's. We've got academics. We've got business leaders. We've got employers. We've got workers. This is a rare kind of spot in Washington. The dialogue that NASI fosters is very much uh, inclusive of those who are in policy-making positions. One of the things that, that was a real benefit to me from the time I spent with Bob Ball was understanding his vision of how this Social Security program was put together. Uh, it had been changed and altered over the years, but basically the way he saw it, it had progressive elements, it had regressive elements, it all hung together as a package. Social Security is really the bedrock of our national community, of our democracy, of our economy, of, you know, it's a juncture of so many important issues. A lot of people think that Social Security is only for retirement but it is in fact a fabulous disability insurance policy. Once you're working, you're covered, even when you're very young. My father was disabled and there were uh, five of us at the, at the time. Had it not been for Social Security, I would not have gone to college. Healthcare's soaring costs and issues with quality improvement 
are really calling upon an organization such as NACI to forge a debate and have a discussion about how to improve Medicare, Medicaid, and other health policy issues. We work very hard to, in effect, more than double the size of, uh, of NACI by bringing in health care members and, and other related fields. Health reform and Medicare and the income programs, of Social Security, disability insurance, unemployment, uh, these are all programs that are due to be modified and changed as we go forward, and NACI provides the forum for the ideas that uh, are going to be incorporated in future legislation. NACI, as the experts in the field, you need to remind Congress again and again, Social Security is more than just the most effective program in our history. It's a sacred bond between young and old, rich and poor, that has made America a better country. Social Security is completely affordable. One thing that the National Academy of Social Insurance is devoted to is getting the facts out. And the facts are clear that this is, a, is a, an issue of politics, not economics. Today it's a lot about how to get people to understand that working together, that collective effort, as something very positive and something that a successful society uh, does. All of us can protect each of us. And the institutions now in law, Social Security, Medicare, just to name two, that advance this proposition those are important institutions. They must be defended at all costs and continue into the future. My hope for what we'll be doing in 25 years is, is strengthening an effective national safety net, social insurance and social assistance that covers people of all ages and all incomes for income security, health security, and long-term care security. And at 25 years, we're celebrating that we made it this far, that we grew, that we are stronger than when we began, and that our programs in America have even more relevance today than when they were first founded. My hope is the Academy becomes the catalyst where people can reach across boundaries and do what needs to be done to provide the kind of protections that the American people still need and will need decades into the future.